Hey everybody, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Um, today we are going to get started on a long-term project, which is going to be constructing a space station. Now, I've designed the entire thing. It's going to have to be launched in sections, um, and they're going to be assembled by a service tug that I'm going to launch too. Um, space Station Module 1 is the one that we're going to do today. I'm not going to show the whole space station until it's done, because I don't want to. But I believe this mod this is the modified version of my normal launcher. Um, basically, all I did was I added a couple of solid rocket fuel boost, a solid fuel, solid fuel rocket boosters to it. So I'm hopeful that it's strutted enough and everything. Um, this is going to be the main module. It has a command section. It's not occupied. This is going to be drone launched. I don't want to have crew on it until the station's operational. Um, it doesn't have any power source of its own, so it's going to be just dead once we get it up into space, but, well, I guess it has the solar panels, we can deploy those, um, but it doesn't have the ability to really maneuver, it has some RCS, but that's it, and so uh, it's going to be dependent on the other modules to be functional, it has enough room for 10 Kerbals to uh, stay in here, so I think it's ready to go, let's just double check the staging, I went over this already, but it should be right. I believe these solid rocket boosters are going to burn out either right about the same time as the first section of fuel or right after. So I think I'll... How do we have these staged right now? They drop off... They drop off in that stage. So these tanks drop off. That's probably about right. We'll see how that goes. Uh, it probably won't matter that much. We'll just be carrying the boosters for a little longer if it doesn't work. So let's go ahead and try to launch this thing. I changed out those little engine quads that I had or actually they were just three engines on each of these. So I changed them out to be just uh, mainsail so this is all mainsail because I want the extra thrust that those provide. It's more important than fuel economy because um, we're just going to be going to a low-ish orbit. Um, I tested the launcher. I know the launcher itself can make it to the orbit that I want, but I don't know if everything else can. So we're going to go with the 250 kilometer orbit for our space station. I want you to stop at stage one. And that's probably all good. Also, um, I think it was the B9 Aerospace Pack or perhaps Damned Robotics, one of my mod packs. Came with these nifty little lights up there. Pretty excited about those. We're going to leave them off for now. Now, I guess this part doesn't really matter when I launch it. That is kind of wiggly. That has me nervous. I'm sure it'll be fine, though. What's the worst thing that could happen? Let's go! I don't know why those little tower things always explode, it seems like, but they do. So, fingers crossed on this. Uh, let's get our fuel gauges up here. Try to keep an eye on the stages as they go. Uh, the solid fuel is going to run out just after it looks like the first set of tanks, so that's good. I have those staged correctly. I thought I did. So this will be pretty nifty probably. I think those, those uh, external tanks are going to drop off and then the solid boosters will like a second or two later. Let's see this happen. Come on and drop one. There we go. And drop to that ah, right next to each other. Nice. That's pretty well timed, actually. So this will probably be the machine that's launching most of the space station. I did not check the weight with MechJeb on this section. I probably should have done that. Because um, the next section I'm going to be launching is not part of the station, but it's a service uh, tug for the station. And I have a feeling that thing is going to gonna be a little bit beefier. In fact, I know it is. It probably weighs like six or seven times as much as this. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. We might have to do the six asparagus stage thing for that one. It has its own engines though on it too, so actually I might be able to have it be the main section. I don't know. I'll figure that out when we, cr when we come to it. For now, we should focus, at the job, uh, focus on the job at hand here. I still need to develop my space shuttle. I think I'm going to give up on single stage to orbit shuttle for now and just build a regular space shuttle that launches like the actual space shuttle did with like booster rockets and stuff because 
Um, I've been doing a lot of testing on my own time of that, and it's just, it's not working out. So, I know it's possible, plenty of people have done it, but I do not feel like messing with that anymore before we get the station going. We're going to need a shuttle for crew transfers and stuff, so I want to make sure we have something that works. How are we doing for altitude here? Coming up on our final orbit, well, on our final apoapsis, we still have, of course, the other side of the orbit to boost up. But this is where mech jab comes in really handy because I don't feel like maneuvering every single one of these. Uh, let's turn on the lights. Yeah, They don't really give off quite as much light as I had hoped. They look cool, but they are not quite as bright as I might have hoped. We'll call it good, though. I mean, they definitely will work. There's the Mun. We've been there now. And it looks like this is going to have plenty of fuel left to deorbit. It's very important, of course, when you're building a space station to do your best to make sure there's not a bunch of debris floating around in a similar or even, you know, more importantly, the same orbit as your station because things can smack into each other. Space is big, but you don't want to be unlucky and have some of our space debris end up causing issues. So, once this has settled its burn down here, let's go ahead and check our orbit. It's looking pretty good, except it's all wiggly, which drives me crazy. So, um, let's get this thing under control here a little bit. Why can I not control you? Would you stop, Mechtub? Shut down the autopilot. Let's try to eh, swing around one way or the other. I don't really care which. Prograde is closer, so I'm going to swing around to that. Let's delete that. Just want to give it a little bit of a nudge so the orbit doesn't wiggle like that. Of course, this probe has a lot of problems uh, torquing a mass quite this big, so... It's just... What did that get us to? Ooh, that, that burned off more than I wanted. Actually, I'm not actually that happy with that. I'm going to have to recircularize this. Let's do that at the next apoapsis. Go and execute. I think I'd rather have it be wiggly than have it do kind of an odd orbit. I guess it's fine if it's odd, isn't it? Yeah, abort. That's actually fine. It really doesn't have to be in a perfectly circular orbit. It's actually kind of better if it's not in a way, I suppose. All right, so we're back in the sun now. Let's get... Come on, get under control here. Let's go ahead. Where are those solar panels? Even though they're not really going to do that much good right now, I might as well deploy them. Because, I mean, they'll do fine, but nobody's going to be on board. Might as well deploy them anyway for now. Alright, so I guess we can just leave this thing in its orbit and deorbit the launch vehicle. Now, hopefully, everything will separate the way it's supposed to. Where is the. Wabam! So long, first space station segment. Godspeed to you. Now, I'm gonna be like super duper careful here because my engine exhaust can damage the the station and more importantly it can send it tumbling out of control so I'm gonna wait till we have a decent amount of separation between us which might take a couple minutes it's gonna take me a couple minutes to swing around to my prograde marker I mean my retrograde marker rather swing around from my prograde in fact I might just burn right now just to get away from the station section in fact let's do that now we have all the time in the world to maneuver. Well, it doesn't look like much yet, but we're getting there. I have to come up with a name for my station. I'm thinking like something like Summit Station or something. That sounds fine to me. Kind of makes sense. RCS would have made this a little bit more pleasant to do. But 
for future stuff, this, this part of the ship is really just going to be dropping stuff off. And the tug is going to be actually handling all of the uh, assembly and stuff. And it has tons of RCS. I'm actually pretty happy with my tug. I, tug. I used the B9 Aerospace Pack. And I'm pretty happy with... I'm going to just cheat that. <laughs> uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. So we'll see that next. That's going to be the very next thing we launch. And like I said, it's way heavier. I'm going to check the weight on this and see how much this weighed compared to how much that weighs. Kind of get me an idea of if this rocket is capable of launching that. Come on. Swing it over. You know what? Let's just call that good enough and burn. This thing just needs to crash. It really doesn't matter where. Alright, it's good. Alright, let's go take a look at that station again. Well, like I said, humble beginning. I can't do anything with this because there's nobody controlling it, but we can look at it for a second before we head off, which is always fun. I'm gonna get a screenshot so I have my little progress of how this is all going. Alright, so let's go get that tug going. So... First of all, let's check how much that weighed. Because I'm very curious about that. And I'm going to actually save this entire sec... Not that section. Oh, we'll disconnect that right now. And... Uh, bad assembly. Why is it a bad assembly? Let's get rid of that. Is it a bad assembly now? No, it's not. Uh, we will call that heavy lifter uh, mark one assembly. Actually, mark. The Roman numerals makes that more official. Um, that makes it kind of hard to check the weight, doesn't it? Well, the probe doesn't really weigh much, so this won't screw it up too much. Where's my mech jib? Alright, so that thing weighed 12.42 tons. Hmm. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the tugboat. Now, I've been testing this thing out. This is the my favorite cockpit in this game. That it's part of the B9 Aerospace. Uh, it also has the uh, engines more mounted forward and back. These engines are just to break when we're actually on our way rendezvousing with something, and then so I don't have to swing the whole thing around. It will make it a lot easier doing maneuvers, and then. Um, these are the main engines. I have those set to action groups so I can shut down one engine, turn on the back engines, and so forth. Um, it also has this extender thing, which is like part of the newer B9 Aerospace Pack, um, so that it pushes straight on so your loads don't get all unbalanced like they might if uh, the normal cockpit kind of looks like, well, it looks exactly like this. And why can I not turn it around the way I want to? There we go. So normally, like you might have a docking port here to push stuff, but if I do that, it's going to be really low, and the center of thrust is in the middle, and it's easy to get loads kind of askew that way. Now I had it on these supports because I was testing the thrusters and stuff before I actually launched it, but it looks ready to go. And how much does this weigh? It doesn't weigh that much more. It weighs three times as much. We probably are going to need a sixth asparagus stage for that. So I'll be back in a minute and we'll get this thing ready to go. And this is going up with a crew in it, so that'll be fun. Alright, so I think this thing's ready to launch. Let's go ahead and... Not that. Let's get the ascent guidance going. We need to... Pick our target. There she is. Let's engage autopilot, launch into the plane of the target, and let's hope this works out. Now, I think what I'll probably end up doing is get this thing up into space. I'm going to get in a, a circularized orbit, and uh, then I'm just going to ditch the fuel tanks and go under its own power because um, I'm a little worried about it's turning radius and stuff with this big old fuel tank on the back I think it's gonna be a lot easier to actually rendezvous stuff 
without the docking port wiggling and all that stuff. So we're gonna do it that way. Of course, it doesn't bode well for actually getting space station sections put together, I guess, if we have to do it that way. But I think it's just gonna be easier. So that's the plan. And barring anything, anything unfortunate, I shall see you in orbit because it's kind of just going to be the same thing as before. The, uh, the tug's engines have fired. I didn't get the staging quite right on that. And in real life, it would be melting the sides of this fuel tank and burning off that decoupler. But it doesn't seem to actually be mattering in any way right now, so that's good. But you're going to have to remember to fix that for future staging. Let's watch this from inside because it looks all cool. Oh, yeah. Let's turn over correct way. Wait, where's my little dot? It's very hard to see that nav ball in these cockpits. That's the only problem I really have with really most of these is that there's a little shiny ball. I mean a shiny uh, thing on the ball and it's Possible to actually see the numbers unless there's a little shadow like that like that works out. Okay, but Oh, this is so cool Yeah, I'm pretty pleased to have my first uh, Actual starship here. This thing is never returning to the surface and well unless we decommission it and then it'll be crashing It's not returning to the surface with a crew on board for sure, unless something goes terribly awry, hopefully it won't be. So before we actually separate our stages here, I need to make sure that, um, well I guess I just separated the stage, didn't I? But uh, before we separate the final stage here, I do need to make sure that I transfer fuel from the big orange tank, whatever, if there's any left, put it up in the littler tanks because it's going to be all screwed up because those engines fired before they were supposed to. I think it's still recoverable, but I'm not real sure. Fingers crossed. So it's it's really not going to take much fuel to get this thing back down to Kerbin. I'm trying to think of how much I want to leave here. Let's do a time skip thing to stop the wiggling. Got a decent amount. We can probably just top off. Yeah, we can't really top off both those things. Uh, I think I'm just going to let it be as it is. This thing will have to just be refueled in a future mission is all. A little bit of a collision there. That was unfortunate. Oh god, a big collision coming. Come on, get under control. Get under control. Why did you decouple so weird? Stop, 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 stop. Jeez, man. What is it doing? Jeez, I have no idea. Like, every time I would disengage the time warp, it would start twirling again for no reason. Alright, how does this thing actually handle? Let's get the fine controls on. That seems okay, actually. I tried to do my best with the RCS. I probably should have put another linear RCS port up there but I did not because it does have a little bit of trouble stopping that rotation but it doesn't seem bad I bet if I use kill rotation <laughs> it's just gonna wiggle around yeah that's not bad yeah that's not bad at all we'll be able to handle this thing just fine all right so let's figure out how we're gonna actually get this intercept done here uh, are we still selected the right target? Yes, we have. Engage the autopilot and align the planes. Do your thing, Mech Jeb. Do your thing. This thing spins like a top. Look at that. Nice. I am going to enjoy having this thing around. Let's get the... I thought I had the lights on. I guess I didn't. It's upside down, but it's looking cool. <laughs> screenshot this is looking all nifty even though it's upside down I can just flip it up the right way I don't want to try to rotate right now uh, maybe I do 
yeah, it turns really well. Nice, I'm pretty pleased. It's my first time designing a starship of sorts, so it's going to turn out just fine. Now, how close are we to each other? We were fairly close. All right, well, Mechjeb's closing in on the target here. Looks like we are going to pretty much be on top of this thing in a second. Um, and there she is. Okay, cool. I'm, I just, I'm going to be editing out all these rendezvous because it's the same thing every time. I'm, I'm not even paying attention while Mechjeb's doing it, to be honest, either. Now, hopefully he's not going to crash us into it. I do always worry about that. exactly how accurate it tries to be. The docking port is not in the friendliest way. There's one on the bottom and there's I'll probably dock on the one right there on the top. It's kind of my thinking. It's starting to look a little space station-y at least. Alright, this is the nerve-wracking part. How close are you going to put me? Let's get the RCS on. It should just park me right next to it here. If this works correctly, I will be immensely happy just because I don't want to have to manually do this crap all the time. I'm a little bit concerned about how much time it's saying it's going to wait to do the burn, though. Just because it's kind of a like, really ridiculously long time. It seems like we're going to be like right on top of this thing. I'm sure it knows best. I, I really do feel like we're going to collide here. I can't open that docking port actually. We have to park park on the bottom docking port because there's no crew on board to control that. So that actually cannot be done. Okay, this is really worrying. I do not like the looks of this. Actually, that's yeah. <laughs> You know what, Mech Jeb? I actually am fine handling this myself now. Let's get rid of this. Alright, swing her around. Get our docking target actually selected here if we can. So what I want to do is kind of get my position relative first. the RCS on so I have a little finer control here too. Alright, pitch the nose up. All right, I think this thing's gonna handle just fine. So let's fire up throttles off right now. Yeah, let's fire up the reverse engines here. Oh man. My mind's getting all warped though. Still need a lot of practice with docking. I'm not the best docker. Alright, there we go. There we go. There we go. Nope, nope, nope. Easy does it. Easy does it. I should have put more RCS thrusters. There's like a dead spot on this. Which is very unfortunate for a tug. Right, I'm going to try Mechjeb's automated docking here. Because I don't feel like screwing with this anymore. It looks like it's going to work, actually. I need to hook up my flight stick. It's the basic long and the short of it. Let's get our alignment good. This will make building the space station a lot easier anyway. Alright, this looks like Mechjeb has got this under control. Hmm. He made that look easy. 
Alrighty, it looks like we're going to be making contact in a second. Magnets should be engaging. There we go. Magnets and docking complete. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Alright, so we have the tug and the first section of the space, bleh, the space station up here now. So I'm feeling pretty good about the progress made today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and probably end it here for now. What we're going to have to do next is I have to actually do some uh, editing to some vehicles. I have the whole space station assembled in the uh, hangar, but I have to separate the sections that I need in the and uh, make a new rocket to launch those. So, But for now, we're just going to leave them in orbit here. Why are their lights off? There we go. I really like this tug design. It works pretty well. Uh, unfortunately, we used a hell of a lot of fuel to get this thing here, um, but it'll be all right. I'm gonna have to send up a fueling mission. I think we probably should send up a fueling, uh, some extra fuel with the next part, and try to refuel with that. So anyway, guys, I will catch you next time. Thanks for watching.